Hey everybody and welcome back to Inside Gaming. Drama, delays, infighting, and most of all, leaks. These are the biggest things that swirl around the video game industry. And they are also by far the most popular thing to talk about, at least as far as our viewership is concerned. And we've been talking about a lot of these things over the past few weeks. But there was another huge leak that happened alongside all that Last of Us Part 2 information. And it comes from good old Nintendo. In fact, some people are even calling this the biggest leak in Nintendo history. And there's a lot of information that's come out about the big end since the leaks began. So why did it get overshadowed by The Last of Us Part 2? What information did leak from Nintendo? And how did all that information leak in the first place? Well, all those questions are what we're aiming to answer today. Let's start with that last question first. Just how did everything get leaked? Nintendo has been especially secretive and closed off with information over the last few years. And with that last big Pokemon leak, they are definitely not the most trusting with any of the information about what they're doing behind closed doors and anything they're not ready to formally announce. So who did it? Well, according to Reset Era, the leak stems from a company called Broadon, which Nintendo had hired to assist with the development of hardware and software around the Wii era. Broadon got hacked, 4chan got the info, and now we know a ton more about the history of various Nintendo products from hardware to software dating all the way back to the N64 era and all the way up to the releases of Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon for the 3DS, along with some other tidbits along the way. So that's a lot of information, but it's also why it completely got overshadowed by The Last of Us Part 2's leaks. And that's because a lot of that information is old. If it had been anything about the Switch or their future plans for what's coming later in 2020 or beyond, you bet it would have taken priority. But it's old stuff, so The Last of Us 2 hit the news rounds first. But of course, this all comes right after Nintendo was hacked and over 160,000 Nintendo accounts had their information yoinked from servers, so it's a bad time for Nintendo overall. Quick sidebar, this is a great time to remind you to protect your various accounts across every website, console, etc. by enabling two-factor authentication. It may seem annoying, but you'll be way safer in the end. And you'll thank us for this reminder down the road. Two-factor authentication actually prevented someone from accessing my own Nintendo account during the big ol' hack. So there's a bit of a personal touch to this to make it extra impactful. So turn it on. Anyway, so with all that information now leaked, what did we learn? Well, obviously a lot, but some of it's incredibly cool, while other parts of it are just interesting little factoids you'll continue to hear about for years to come as flavor text in a multitude of video essays to pad their runtime. Hey, no shame everybody, we do that stuff too. And it's still information worth sharing. The Reset Era post by Ethereo states that, quote, As you may be aware, in the last few weeks on 4chan, multiple Nintendo-related old things have been leaking, starting with old Pokemon debug ROMs and source code, then the most recent 3DS debug ROMs, then keys for all consoles up until the DSi, and now the biggest of them all, the full source code, design files, documentation, and pretty much everything used to create the revolution, aka Wii. One of the biggest things to come from this was what is being called the, quote, Nintendo Master Lists, which is an Excel database of absolutely every assigned product code for everything they've done up to that point. We're talking Famicom, Game Boy, N64, the Pokemon Mini, absolutely everything, except for the Satella view, oddly enough. Not sure why. We also got the digital software title key list for everything on the DSi and Wii. And this is a bit of an oversimplification, but with the title key, you would essentially be able to grab everything off of those digital services through the Nintendo update server. Kinda neat. The three biggest things we got were the source codes for the N64, GameCube, and Wii, as well as pretty much everything you'd need to get an emulator for each of those running without too much of an issue. We're talking SDKs, boot ROM, planning documents, all the information on manufacturing and publishing systems, library source codes, all the development and planning information about them as well. It's just so much information. We also got an official Game Boy emulator from the Big N themselves, as well as some information about the IQ player too. It's the ROM community's biggest win as far as information goes. They can just look at all the documents on how all these things work, and that can mean big things for those advocating for the use of emulators and video game preservation as a whole. And as much as Nintendo has continued to fight against, shut down, and sue various ROM and emulation sites, that hasn't stopped the community just yet. This whole information 
leak makes those communities stronger as a whole because now the emulators for various systems can be tweaked for peak performance and perfect emulation, given a bit of time. And for those advocating for video game preservation, this is a good thing as well. They now have documentation and development information that they previously would have never had access to. This, of course, means we know more about the past and that could be used to help learn from them and create new things based on them in the future. So yay, except not quite yay, sorry. There's huge legal issues with using leaked information for any production purposes. The developers behind the famous Dolphin emulator have previously gone on record with older leaks that they refused to look at them in an effort to avoid any kind of legal issue with Nintendo over it. Back in 2017, the creators of Dolphin spoke to PC Gamer about this and said, quote, you can save a lot of time if you cheat and look at the proprietary documentation, console SDKs, leaks, etc., while trying to understand how a console works. This is, in general, frowned upon in many emulation projects. It puts the whole project at risk of a lawsuit. It's one of the things where we have no doubts about the legality. It is clearly illegal. With open source projects, the development process is usually very open. If I were to take the Dolphin as an example, we talk about everything in public. We do code reviews in public, etc. That doesn't guarantee that our contributors don't look at this documentation in secret, but it makes it harder to do so. And we have a clear stance against it. I've personally banned multiple people from interacting with us because they made it clear when talking to us that they'd base their work on illegally obtained documentation. So while we're sure a lot of the emulation community will use this information to better beef up their emulators and give them a more versatile compatibility with ROMs, it seems that it isn't the goal of every emulator developer. Okay, so it's me, and this story is about Nintendo, which means you know I'm going to talk about Pokemon. Some have included additional information on things that had previously leaked. We have 3D software that was used for internally modified builds of Gen 6 and Gen 7, a Mew distribution app for the 3DS versions of Red and Blue, a tournament recorder for Sun and Moon, and cool stuff surrounding the Space World 97 demos. And it's that Space World 97 stuff that's the best part, because we now have real access to the source code and beta designs from Gen 2 of Pokemon. The beta designs are adorable, by the way, if you haven't seen them. Beta Wooper and Dunsparce are personal favorites. But when Wait, there's more. According to various code and some digging around by the emulation community, there were originally two games planned to come out between the release of Gen 1 proper and Gen 2. This eventually culminated in the release of Pokemon Yellow, but we could have had more. Namely, a Pokemon Pink starring Jigglypuff. It seems to play out more or less the same as Yellow, but with some slight variations to it. That typical, we have two versions and you're gonna wanna buy both thing that Pokemon has been notoriously famous for. All this leaked older Pokemon info and source code comes after yet another rumored leak surrounding Pokemon Sword and Shield, which may apparently include more Pokemon than we previously thought. Some are citing a Galarian form for Jinx, some are saying there's a Steel-type Eevee that's going to be included, but these are rumors, and Pokemon rumors at that, so we can only trust that part so much. Honestly, anytime a rumor comes out about a new Eevee being added to Pokemon, I immediately become suspicious. So I'm not just going to take a grain, but entire pounds of salt with that rumor in particular. Arguably the coolest thing to come out around all of this was rediscovered Mother 3 footage. <laughs> No, no, not that one. That's the one. Yes, long ago, the original version of Mother 3 was intended to be Mother 64, and we finally have more to see from what we could have had. Just another quick aside. Hey, Nintendo, if you're listening, give us a Mother 3 in the West. I know you've heard it a thousand times, but this is just a formal request from your loving friends at Inside Gaming to just give us the game already. Now, the link between the Pokemon leaks and these Mother 3 slash 64 leaks date all the way back to the original development of Pokemon Snap, ironically enough. Pokemon Snap wasn't always Pokemon Snap. It was originally a game called Jack and the Beanstalk. What Jack and the Beanstalk looked like, played like, or what it intended to actually be is kind of lost to time, no screenshots or gameplay were ever actually released for it, but remnants of its name can be seen in the credits and opening to Pokemon Snap. What we do know is that elements from Jack and the Beanstalk eventually went on to become the prototype of Earthbound slash Mother 64, which as we all know was inevitably cancelled and reborn as Mother 3 on the Game Boy Advance. Which again, Nintendo, just port it to the west, please, we were desperate. Now this is less a part of the actual leaks, but it's just something that's been running concurrently with those leaks yet it is still suspicious that it dropped around the same time. Not to mention that Shigesato Itoi, the creator of the Mother series, just announced the Hobonichi Mother Project, which will be including various things like books and other Mother merchandise. Again, 
very suspicious. Overall, there are about two terabytes of data that leaked, and there are various communities still rummaging through all those files, finding things like a PC build of Super Mario 64, those older Pokemon games, and so on. So we're likely to continue to get more information out about this as the days go by, and these communities have more time to pick through the various pieces of data. And that's the basics of what went down surrounding the Nintendo leaks. But again, keep your eyes peeled, as there's still tons of data to sort through, and we don't fully know just what other secrets this leak may hold. What other information do you hope we find out of these leaks? Personally, I'm hoping that more stuff comes out about Mother 64. I know there's a build in there somewhere. It has to be there. Leave your hopes and dreams in the comments and we'll take a look at them. And thanks for watching Inside Gaming. But yeah, while leaks definitely happen in video games, these were especially harmful considering how high profile The Last of Us 2 is. Oh, and some people already decided that the game sucks and they're not gonna buy it. So that's also very harmful. Oh, what, a course. flash judgment? Ah! Almost immediately there was speculation about who leaked the game and wh why?